It's the ML Sports Platter here all over the major platforms. Make sure you download, subscribe, rate, and review as we are brought to you by Stanley Law Offices. Together, they'll work to get you the maximum reward. And a big thanks as well to Camillo's Golf Club, Stumbling Monkey Brewing Company, and our friends over at Ken's Auto Detailing. Spring and summer, man. We're basically here in and around central New York. Go get your car, truck, boat, motorcycle, you name it, detailed at the official detail house of the program. That would be Ken's Auto Detailing. I bring in a very good friend of mine right now, one of the best in the business, a guy I hold uh, way up here uh, in our sports media landscape. It is J.P. Butler, the St. Bonaventure basketball insider, reporter, writer, been covering the team forever, and of course is a Bon alum like myself. J.P., welcome to the show. Thanks a lot. Hey, hey Mike, I, I appreciate that. And uh, you saying those things about me, I think the same of you. You know how much I enjoy doing these with you so it means a lot you know when you when you ask me on and happy to be here today yeah and it's our first video one as well so we had to kind of make sure there's no nothing on our face. i just had breakfast make sure there's no ketchup on my mouth or anything like that right. so here we go um I, i'm gonna start <laughs> there's so much to get to i can't even imagine what it's been like down in that area but um I'm going to start in the current and kind of work backwards if we could. Obviously, Joe Manhurst resigned. Sure. Yep. Um, and, and clearly, there's a lot of people out there who thought at, at the time he took the job, he wasn't the right person. He never understood Bonaventure. Uh, and then the whole fiasco with the NIT. So I guess I want to start in the current time, and then we'll work back to the whole NIT thing and the screenshot on ESPN and all that nonsense. But as far sure. as right now, this was the obvious, right? I mean, it had to happen whether he got fired or he resigned. And where do we go from here as far as AD, sports, depart, you know, athletic department, vision, NIL, portal, all these things that we need, like we need Bonaventure to be? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a lot to unpack here. You know, I, I think the biggest thing is that this, it, it needed to happen, but this was sort of a, last straw kind of thing. It wasn't just the only thing that led to the parting of ways here. If, if if this had been by itself, maybe they can come back from it and, and, you know, win the alumni back over. But I'm hearing that uh, there, there were a bunch of other little things bubbling just beneath the surface. Um, and, and this was just kind of the thing that put it over the top. Um, but you, you, you know, you're right. I think at the time, initially, people wanted to think that this is a great hire because you were sort of combining the fact that he did have that big school experience. He's been at places like Duke and Syracuse and Ohio State, but he's from Western New York and he's he was physically, you know, from Bana. So he obviously had known about Bana and had hopefully gotten a sense of it. He's a Western New York guy. So you wanted to think initially that, hey, this is a this is a great hire. But I think very quickly and then, you know, in the two and a half years since that just hasn't come to be. Um, now, I you know, I never I never heard uh, a, a ton of specifically negative things about uh, man hurts, but I, I never heard a whole lot of good either. It was just difficult to see um what what good was uh necessarily going on there he um didn't seem to be very accessible or engaging you never really saw him talking to people at games you just kind of wondered is this has this been going well um and then you see that he's applying for other jobs within a year of being at Bonas. i know that was very concerning to administration um, it, it, you know, there are some coaching hires, uh, I, I guess that they're pretty happy with, but overall there just was always a disconnect. I mean, from, from his introductory press conference, it's a great week, but from there, there was just a disconnect with him and the university with what maybe his vision was with quote unquote, not getting Bana as has been discussed, um, you, you know, plenty this week. Um, and, and just not, uh, sharing the same vision, you, you, you know, I guess going forward. And then, and then this happens obviously a week ago and it was just kind of the thing that put it over the top. All right. So now we backtrack <laughs> to 
Mike Lindsley and many others sitting on the couch, flipping around the channels. The screen comes up on ESPN. And I go, I'm seeing all of them right in a row. I'm like, yeah, okay, Syracuse. Yeah, yeah, of course. Huh? And there it is. There's my school. And I'm like, there is, I stood up by myself. And I, and I jumped, I was like, there is no, I'm glad nobody came out and saw this, right? But I'm like, there is no way that this school, with what the NIT means to them, with what they did a couple of years ago to the Final Four, of course, it was an underachieving season, but, you know, they still went to the Garden. There's no way that this school, without football, without Power Five, without a monster brand, without the finances, without the – no way. There's no way. The Bob Lanier, 1977, there's no way. Jimmy Saddle, there's no way. And I'm going in my head in waves. I'm getting worked up. I got bad blood pressure to begin with. And I'm nuts. I can't believe what I'm seeing. I hope this isn't true. I hope they made an error. If there's any school that needs this, that would never do this, it's St. Bonaventure. When that screen yeah. came up, what happened to J.P. Butler? Yeah. You know, it's funny. I, you know, went to Brooklyn. I was out. I did the Duquesne game on Saturday. I got back on Sunday night. It was a long week. And I'm thinking, okay, this is going to be a pretty quiet week, all things considered. And then very, you know, innocuously enough, it was Tuesday night. I get a text from a friend that I actually don't speak with very often. And it's just that graphic. And it says, is this real? And that was the first thing to just sort of o o open uh, the door to everything that would follow. And, you know, I just I just stopped and thought about it for a minute. I go, you know what? I bet that could be real because for me it was why was St. Joe's chosen or why, why is St. Joe's in the NIT and not Bana? They finished behind Bana in every way, in the standings, in the net. Bana won their head-to-head -head matchup pretty convincingly, so it doesn't make a whole lot of sense that they get invited over Bana, so maybe they actually did. And and not to get too long-winded here, but we do there, there is some precedent for this whole idea of will they, won't they? It was people forget two years ago with that run as as memorable as it was, and they made something out of what had been uh, an underachieving season, as you mentioned. Um, people forget that that started by Schmidt saying we took a vote on whether we wanted to play or not, and we chose to play. So, you know, so those guys, it was the five seniors, they were on their way out the door. They're probably upset about not, I mean, they certainly were upset about not making the NCAA tournament. So it had to be a question of, do they even really, are they even really motivated to want to play in this thing? So there was a little bit of a precedent there of voting to play where it could even be a question, you know, before it never would have been a question. So. I think, you know, now, now, like you said, there's this outrage of, oh my gosh, why on earth would a place like Bana, who does have this rich NIT history, who uh, should, uh, you would think, take any opportunity to play in the postseason at the NIT level or higher to have that exposure to maybe really live what they uh, mm -hmm. were able to accomplish two years ago? How, how this is crazy. All the things you said right there. And so, you know, I, I think at the time it was the outrage over not accepting, over over not doing what we thought was the right thing and playing. Uh, but as the days went on, the the actual sort of sin and, and, and really the core of the issue was just the complete mishandling in the complete and utter lack of communication that took place between uh, the decision makers, uh, the team, and alumni and fans. And, and, and that was really the problem. We can get into that part of it with your, with your next question here. Yeah, because that's the next part. Um, and yeah, at, at a pretty good communications slash journalism school, by the way. <laughs> yeah, um, that, that, that's the whole other layer. Pretty good PR, pretty good place. We, you know, might not be known like a new house or a Northwestern or still pretty good. Right. Um, so the timeline, the screen comes up. Um, 
People are going crazy. I was getting messages from certain people who couldn't believe I was irate about it. And then everybody was irate. And then all the columns came out and everybody was talking in the social pages where it was about 75% minimum of people were irate. And I'm like, Hey, come on, man. That's why I was mad. I, you know, I posted right away. Um, yeah. So it goes into this thing and then we have to kind of guess and we assume and we do the whole thing, right? Social media, uh, who's going to write the first story, who's going to tell the truth, who's not. So I guess from the time that the screenshot happened until now, right? We, we now know how, where are, where are the facts? The facts are that the screenshot came on Bonaventure let them know that they didn't want to be a part of the NIT before the bracket was announced and the invites were sent out, which is basically they happen simultaneously, right? So they opt out of the tournament before an invite can be presented, which means they didn't technically decline, but it's right. still an indirect way of declining, right? right. Then That's from right. there we go to learn that some, if not most of the players also found out with the screenshot, right? And it was Manhurts's decision mostly to say no to the NIT, then the days keep going on and there's all these balls in the air. Some, you know, it was, well, the, then the debauchery of the statement with by him and then there's another statement, all of these things, right? So hit me with what was real, what's not real from then until now. And please, please work in the most important individual, Mark Schmidt. That's the guy everybody wants to know where was he on this? Did he want to play? We heard about his quote earlier about, you know, the, the love of Bonaventure this year. He did it again. He does it every year. He loves the alumni, the fans, and on and on it goes. I know I'm going on long here, but this is yeah, all no. this is all a part of the timeline. And Mark Schmidt is a 300-game winner at this school. He is the face of the program. He saved the program. He saved the university out of the academic fraud. Where, where was he on this? Where is he now? Do you know? I mean – there's been a lot of things that have been thrown around. Did Mark Schmidt want to play? Did he not want to play? When did players find out like the timeline, right? That's what I want to know. Screenshot to now, how much of all of what I just listed, like where are the facts, where are the inaccuracies? Take us through it. Yeah. So I'll uh, start with the facts and then I'll go into uh, my hopefully, you know, well-educated uh, opinion on how I thought some of that stuff went down. Okay. So yeah, the, the screenshot, uh, goes up Tuesday night. Bana is silent and, um, you know, costly and unfortunately so all the way through lunch on Wednesday. And then finally, Wednesday afternoon, um, they the first thing they do is uh, communicate with only a select number of fans via a Zoom behind a paywall that you had to be, you know, one of the bigger name donors or season ticket holders. So they, it, 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 no, now they're only uh, revealing to, to these people what's going on here. So that's, that's just further sort of enraging regular fans who want to know what's going on here. So they put that statement out. And then finally at like one o'clock on Wednesday, they issue a statement to the general public. And, and, you know, again, that one, we know not a good look, uh, from Manhurts and administration, and then certainly the follow-up stuff on Thursday, not a good look. But I think what we could glean factually from that is that uh, they had a player meetings on Sunday when they got home to basically take the temperature to get the feel of what guys were going to do. Now, we know that Barry Evans Kyrell Luke and Melian Martinez entered the transfer portal on the first day, right. Monday, May 18th. I have from uh, sources, I think it's pretty well understood at this point that those three had basically told the coaching staff that they intended to go into the portal on Monday, no matter what happened. Okay. Now that it would have been interesting to see if Bana, you know, goes and wins on Sunday and they're in in the NCAA tournament. I think that that certainly changes, but I think their feel going into a tens was that we're probably not winning, and our intention is to go into the portal right away. So the coaching staff knew that. It certainly seems as if Chad Venning had one foot out the door because he then goes into the portal shortly after that statement is released on Wednesday. 
Uh, now we know that no Noel Brown was uh, pretty pretty banged up. He was he was hurt. He was playing through pain at a ten. So maybe he was uh, just sort of done at that point. Um, uh, just just from injury, and the and and they had talked a little bit in the release about how there was some injury, but I I don't think it went beyond him. I think he was the one guy who was sort of hurt, maybe wouldn't play. Uh, but then and, and so that that's all fact. What, you know, my my speculation here now, I guess, is that I think as part of these player interviews, they basically just sort of again took the temperature of the interest. Do 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 you want to play? Do you not want to play? And I, it, I would guess that the overall feeling was that guys were just like, eh, maybe I, I would, but just sort of not really. Um, Micah Adams Woods, I, I can, I've got no problem saying now. Heard from multiple, multiple sources, was just a huge problem behind the scenes all year. He strikes me as a guy who was probably just ready to be done. And so when you put all of that together. Okay, now it's I, I, I'm willing to bet that Schmidt wanted to play or was certainly uh, would have loved to continue coaching and play in the postseason, but that he basically was going to leave it up to just sort of what the error of the whole thing was. And that was again, that's calling back to 22 when they supposedly took a team vote of whether they were going to play or not. If that team had voted, our heart's not in it. We don't want to play. This would have happened two years ago, even. And that team would have never made that run. So I think he was willing to go with whatever the feeling sort of was. And the feeling strikes me that they just, between guys in the portal, between Brown being injured, uh, between some guys who just didn't care, just didn't seem to really want to play, that he and Man Hurts then made the decision, the two of them, you know what, bag it, we're not doing it. These guys don't seem to care. It's a different era now. All these guys have one foot out the door. They're probably, you know, a little mad about that this is where things have gotten. Yeah. Where, I mean, we've got to ask players if they want to play in the NIT in the postseason anymore. This is crazy. Forget it. We're not, we're not doing it. And so they make that call. Now, again, in, in, in retrospect, you can understand a little bit from that perspective why they made that call. It does seem now that there there was some justification to that, and you can understand a little bit. But then they just they make that call, and that's it. They don't really tell anybody. They don't tell the team that this is what they actually decide to do. Um, they certainly don't tell uh, alumni and fans that this would they've chosen to do and it was with the whole idea that well nobody's gonna they're just hoping nobody finds out and if that graphic doesn't go up nobody does find out and we're not having this conversation about everything that transpired and joe manhurts resigning in the aftermath okay interesting stuff there jp butler again our guest basketball insider st bonaventure university the oth you've known him for years all brought to you by our good friends at Rosie's Corner and Burn Dairy. So I see what you're saying, and I know that you're completely sourced to the brim and really close to the situation. But a couple of things that you said there actually are on top of what was going to be asked next by me. Yep. The Mark Schmidt factor of taking, you know, the temperature, right? Taking the air of the situation and then we think, right? You're saying that collectively him and Manhurts said no to it. That's what you're saying? That that yes. Schmidt took the air of it and said no, which stuns me because Mark Schmidt seems like the guy who wouldn't take no for an answer, who would be like, well, whoa, whoa, hang on a minute. Let me just feel, so who, raise your hand if you don't want to play. Couple of guys raise hand. I don't know if this happened, but I'm just, I'm just saying, let's just, okay. And yeah. a couple of guys said no. And then you had Martinez, who cares? Portal. Luke was no factor this year. Who cares? Barry Evans says, okay, there's a, there's one, but let's say he... And then later, Venning goes, but we don't know what Venning did in that meeting. You know, he probably, he probably would have said no. He probably knew he was going to the portal. We don't know when he told the coaches he was going to the portal, right? We don't know. Right. I, okay. So, right. okay. Adams Woods is a problem. 
let's assume that he's out as well. So all those guys mentioned, for whatever reason, are out of the NIT, don't want to play, portal, problem child on the team, whatever the hell the problem is. What about everybody else? What about, what if Brown was a little bit banged up? Please, he could have played. What about, what about Charles Pride, who a couple of people I know who are close to him, he kind of was frustrated with NIL portal. I know him and Schmidt did a lot of this this past year, by the way, too. And I know you've heard a lot of that. But what about him? What about uh, Daryl Banks? You know, what about all these other guys? What I'm getting at here, uh, JP, is if they could have had six guys, technically, you don't want to go with five because somebody goes down. Oof. But if you have six guys, seven guys, maybe the seventh guys on, on the fence, can't you play? I mean, doesn't it seem right? I mean, you can, and and Mike, that's a great you, you know will to have and heart to want to have, and you you think that at a place like Bana, uh, hey, we're gonna through thick and thin, we're gonna figure it out, we're gonna find a way, we're gonna do it. That that's all great, but I, I just think the the reality on top of it is that say you know they it seems like there were more guys than not who either didn't want to or didn't really care about playing. And that that's based a little bit in sources. But that's also based in a, a pretty telling quote from Manhurts when he said, hey, we've learned that the NIT means a lot more to our alumni than it does to our players. I took that as these guys just didn't these guys today, not just these guys specifically, but college basketball players in general, sure. just do not seem to care about the NIT anymore. So let's say that more of them than not didn't want to play. Let's say that Daryl Banks was among the only guys whose heart was truly in it. Maybe okay. Asa, sure. Okay, maybe maybe Pride. No, Noel Brown, I think, was more hurt than he was letting okay. on. So I'm, I'm willing to say that. So at that point, yeah, like, you know, Let's just find a way still. But at that point, does it is it really necessary? I guess I would ask you to take a team of. Right, I get it. A team that doesn't want to be there. The attitude is already stinking. This and the other. I, yeah, I, to I, pay to then pay to go play a road game. Right. To to maybe just get killed right. on national TV. At that point, that it does that doesn't make a ton of sense. It and has that a point, lot of that Wagner feel. Right from yeah. 16 at the RC, so when they got screwed. Now that year, I would have said that's a totally different situation because they got hosed out of the NCAA. I still would have played. I still would have tried to win the NIT, but that's a whole other mental approach. When you get screwed out of the NCAA, you win your league. You're the top RPI team. I think still to this day to not make the NCAA is it at large, right? I still think Bana that that was that's still the top RPI mark to not make the at large. I believe um, that's right. You know, so 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 that that does that's a whole other mental thing than this is. I get it, and I'm not comparing this current thing to a scandal. I'm not comparing this to that situation. I'm not. But here's the part that bothers me about the Manhurts thing too, with him. Well, it matters more to our alum than it does the players. It meant. What about the university that you're the athletic director at? Doesn't it mean something to you? Doesn't it mean something to the take out spending money on stuff? Everything costs money for crying out loud. You go to the RC cafe, you got to pay for all the stuff in order to get an upsell on a chicken quesadilla, for God's sake. <laughs> Everything costs money, sure. right? That's Everything true. does. You have to spend money to make money. Here's my thing. Don't you care? Okay, take the alumni out of it. Take the fans out of it. Take where you are. Your chair is the athletic director chair. You know that you need branding. You're not Michigan State. You're not Duke. You're not Syracuse. You're not any of these schools. You're not Pittsburgh. You don't have football. You don't have anything. You don't. You have bonded basketball. You have a lot of very respectable programs other than that. But bonded basketball is your A number one. As Mark Schmidt says, our basketball program is our football program. Don't you know that you need the branding? I mean, can they not fill in the players on this? Do the players not know how important it is? I don't know. I'm saying I'm not saying you have to force guys to to want to be there, and and you can't you can't will the situation for somebody to understand the importance of our school like we think of it or whatever else. But what about Manhurts fighting for that part? What about Schmidt fighting for that part? They both damn well know how much you need that branding. Even if it's the NIT, 
that you could strike lightning in a bottle and end up in the Final Four in New York and the Garden in those particular years or in Indianapolis, a basketball hotbed where the branding can improve. Maybe it can make you money down the line. It can get you another recruit down the line. Don't they understand that part, that you're not Syracuse, that you're not Michigan State, that there is the brand appeal, that there is the Bona logo, the brown and white I mean, isn't there that? Even one more, two more games on television, them talking about Schmidt and Lanier and the guys coming in next year and the previous runs and the history, isn't that important? I mean, yeah, I I think you're right about all of that. And I I think that's the way fans viewed it. That's why fans were so outraged. I think there, I, I have to think that there's part of Schmidt who absolutely still believes that and would have wanted to proceed and coach. Uh, with man hurts, the obviously concerning thing there was the quote about, well, wouldn't we rather be associated with the teams that were in that graphic? You remember that quote where that was very eye opening because people are saying, wait a minute, you, you, you would rather be this uh, P5 team that wasn't good enough to make the NCAA tournament and then rejects the NIT like that's that's the boat you sort of want us in don't we want to be bonaventure where yeah we're good enough to make a run at the ncaa tournament every couple of years which has been amazing by the way but that it is also good for a program of our size one of the smallest division one schools in the country to be in the nit or better we do have that rich history our fans do care we saw how much People still cared when that team underachieved two years ago and still everybody got behind them. Just and they flooded people. Charlottesville and they flooded MSG. That was one of that MSG crowd was one of the best non Riley Center yeah. environments I've ever seen. You would think these things would be taken into account. But again, I think just right now in a vacuum, in this isolated incident, the players, they're, 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 I, I think Schmidt is very frustrated. I I think the administration is frustrated with just the current climate of things that it is just fighting such an uphill battle right now and such an unwinnable war right now. Players have so much agency. It's gotten so far out of hand that you just, they just weren't going to, to win that, those things, I guess. And that, it is up to the players at the end of the day. They they could be out the door the next day, which some of them were. They they these guys do not care anymore about the NIT. It is NCAA or bust now to this generation. Which and means yeah, that's he, basically it then. That's it for Bonas then. That's it. Even even five years ago, three years ago, it would yeah. have been insane to say that you ha- would have to take a vote or ask or beg right. players to play. Right. But that is the reality now. And that part of it, I'm not necessarily putting on Schmidt to say, you know, well, you need to tell them you don't ask them to play. You tell them they're playing. Yeah. Like we'd all old, like to like think, old we'd, yeah. we'd all like to think that, but that's yeah. just not the reality anymore. Okay. Unfortunately, these guys don't care. They got a foot out the door. They either, they, they either want to leave because they didn't get enough playing time or they want to leave because they think they can go get more money. People are in their ear. It's entirely out of control. And I I think there was a part of it on Sunday in this decision where the frustration of the whole thing just took over and they threw their hands up and they said, you know what? Fine. Fine. This is where we're at. Fine. I I think Schmidt, uh, you know, again, from sources and you're seeing it all over the place. These coaches are leaving they're retiring early they're going to take nba job out of it jay wright has a lot more to give he is done with it nick saban yeah retired due in large part to what's going on right now it's close i think too i I think schmidt you know it might be another year or or two at most and and he might i i think there was just frustration that took over and they threw their hands up on sunday and they said fine and, you know, we'll just we'll call the NIT and tell them, hey, this is our situation. You know, just don't even consider us. We're not doing it. And again, that part of it, in retrospect, you can understand a little bit and you can justify. But it was the gross mishandling and lack of communication and the bungling 
of the whole thing and the doubling down on some of these statements and not telling the players and not being transparent with alumni that really set it off into the storm that it was. And I'll, I'll, I'll wrap up by saying there are two ways that this could have been prevented or would never have been a blip on the radar. It would have been the quietest week. It would have just been about enjoying the NCAA games last week. One, if that graphic never appears on that ESPN broadcast, if ESPN never decides to put everybody on blast that rejected an NIT bid, or two, all they had to do is after these player meetings on Sunday is issue a brief, simple statement, being transparent and explaining the situation and just saying, look, in an effort to uh, be open with our alumni and fans as we want to be, um, this was the situation. We have guys uh, who are entering the portal, who already have a foot out the door, who are maybe a little bit injured, who we were concerned about their motivation to want to play. It seemed like we were going to be at a severe competitive disadvantage, which is unfortunate. That's the reality of the situation now. It doesn't make any sense to pay to go out and just get destroyed by Villanova on a Wednesday night. Um, that because of those things, we preemptively decided to withdraw from postseason consideration. And I think at that point, you know, 95% of fans would have been understanding, would have been mostly understanding and accepting of that situation. I think you still would have had your fans who were like, no, unacceptable. We got to play, you know, no matter what, take your five guys and play. Um, and that, and that's, you know, part of that maybe is okay too, but that's all they had to do. Right. If, if that happens, everybody is fine. This doesn't, uh, blow up into the storm that it is. Joe Manhurts is still the AD today, and and we're and, and you know we're we're going into yeah. uh, this week. We're going into the Sweet Sixteen games this week, and nobody's really thinking twice. We're thinking now about just next year. Of, yeah, next year. You're thinking yeah. about next year, and again, that that's you know what an unfortunate reality. Again, Mike, as it stands, they will welcome back at most at most two guys who played meaningful minutes this year. Right. And that's if Brown doesn't leave. And I'm yep. hearing that's not definite. Yep. So say he does, you're in a situation where you bring one guy back. One. Yep. Again, only team, Asa would yep. be the only guy. Yeah, Bonaventure, you're, too. You're not getting more. Team, yeah, like all of these guys coming in, you get more of these one-year guys, maybe yep. two at most. Right. Uh, you get a freshman who has a good year. He leaves because he wants to. I mean, this this is the, 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 the whole thing is just – unfortunate to me it, it, it was always about watching these guys develop having four years of them having them be part of the community being in it together uh watching a guy like ladarian griffin develop into what he did watching a Dion wright develop into what he did or even like a mobley or somebody else like even two years that which felt like four to us because of the, two, what they did there two years plus a sit out year Sure, you know, so, you know, so even, even they're ingrained. Yes, yeah, even they're ingrained within the program for three exactly. years. They're bonds, and it these, feels like four. These yeah. guys now, it, it, they are mercenaries. They are ships passing in the night, is what I have come to describe them as, and it's just unfortunate. You just nailed the entire last part of what I was going to ask you because of like what could have been done thing on that Sunday, you know, to make us not feel this way and all that. And it sounds like the Schmidt thing, he, you know. Push, 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 will, 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 play, 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 no matter what. But even he couldn't have done something here, and they kind of collectively decided. So I, I, it sounds like Schmidt wanted to play. Everything was against him, so he agreed to not play, right? That's what you're basically that, saying. That, that's, that's, I think, a lot of that. Okay. 75% of that's based okay. in fact. 25% of me okay. is, is that's my educated, I hope, uh, opinion on the matter. Uh, but again, it would just be nice for Schmidt to come out and say right. something. He, That's what I'm left, saying. You, you, you know, man hurts uh, to fed, fed him to the wolves. He obviously had to fall on his sword entirely in, in this right. whole situation because he's gone. It, it would be nice if Schmidt were to just come out and say something, verify 
you know, what I'm saying or uh, give his two because you he definitely would have had the the final, you, you know, most of the call in that situation. I'm sure Manhurst signed off on it and was supportive of whatever they felt was just the right thing to do. But certainly Schmidt is involved in, in making the primary call on that. So it would just be nice if he would, you know, come out and say something um, because he's, yeah, I mean, just he hasn't spoken since the uh, post-game press conference after the Duquesne game. Right. People are wondering. Um, he's sub, somehow coming off unscathed right. in this whole thing where maybe he should just be a little bit transparent about, hey, here's why we did this. Yes, I think he should do more. He's the face of the program. He's more he's the face of the school. Any- Yes, exactly. He's the face of everything. He's like, I, I mean, come on. I'm with you, though. Press conference slash release something like right away after that player meeting. Okay, I've held you way, way, way late. I don't want to get you in trouble, but I, I got, if you don't mind, just in the final 90 seconds. Sure. If players don't want to do the NIT and it's NCAA or bust, we're in trouble. And I'm using word because we. this is a we thing now, okay? It's you. It's me. It's Mike Baccaro. It's all the alumni that I, uh, are, are, I'm interacting with everybody on Facebook. It's the messages and the tweets that I'm getting at 1130 midnight. It's all the graduates. It's all, it's everybody. It's current students. It's I know there's a couple of administrators there who probably wish the team didn't win a game because they're always on that campus, as your boy Chuck Pollock says. Um, right. It's all of us, the ones who have got it right here. And I know you're objective like I am, but there's still that little bit in there that I, I know it sits there. There's that brown that's in your heart too. What the hell sure. are we doing then? Why do we even play? Just cancel the program. If it's NCAA or bust, and we know flat out we're not being negative, it's realistic. We're not going to the tournament every year. We're not Michigan State, Duke. We're not Kansas, Kentucky, NIL, Portal. Oh, everybody just left. Oh, well, you know what? I feel good about Syracuse making it next year, even if they lose a lot of people because they got Freeman and Moore coming in. Boom. That ain't Bonaventure. So if you're not going to have the secondary option and you don't want the secondary option and you're just going there to play, maybe you get lucky on the NIL and you go to the next spot on the in, in, in the pond as a frog on a lily pad. Why even play then? Why play? Why sell the tickets at the RC? Why go to Brooklyn? Why play the A-10 schedule? Why play for Florida Atlantic if all of this you're hoping to get to the NCAAs when eight or nine out of ten times you're not making it in eight, nine out of 10 years, why play? Because yeah, you're never yeah. going to make the NCAA tournament anyway. So what what are we doing? Well, why play? Well, so, but to that point too, they, they you know, they have positioned themselves where uh, they, they do have a uh, semblance of a chance, right? I mean, we've, we've seen it. They, they've made three NCAA tournaments since 2012. And you could say that there were three other years where it was right there. 15, 16, 15, sure. we thought they were snub. 18, 19, they came within a missed Nelson Caputo three-pointer mm-hmm. of being back in the tournament. And 21, 22 started off as if it was going to be an at-large year. They, we sat around the Thanksgiving d- dinner table, and they were number 16 in the country, which mm-hmm. is insane. Mm-hmm. It is. And so, so I'm saying that there's six out of – there are six out of 11 years right there where you are in the picture. And even if you're not going to be an at-large team, they position themselves where they've been a top four, a 10 team. And so they like to think they would always at least have a chance to get yeah. in. I'll let you finish. I'll let you finish. So they, do, they do want to be an NCAA team. But with the NIT thing, it's, it's, this has been a, an adjustment period post NIL post portal. I think they are still, adjusting they still you know won 20 games this year which i do think is there there's some level of accomplishment there and i think the only other thing you can do is i guess now that we know this is the view of the nit try to recruit guys that you know aren't going to thumb their nose up at it at the end of the year and who want to play in it and and so maybe now that's that's part of who they try to get to play here guys that love it and and still would want to play in the NIT and we don't run into this again. I know that you play, you, you just threw the numbers game out and that's nice, but you're like, they were this away and then the snub away and they were that away and they were this away. Those are the almost. That's what I'm talking about. 
they're still Mark Schmidt since he took over there. How many times have they actually made the NCAA tournament? There's been snubs. It's so hard. How many times have you and I texted and joked, hey, JP, Bon has got to go undefeated this year to make the NCAA tournament, and we laugh about it. But at the end of the day, we're also like, what do they have to do? I mean, they had they had they won the league in 15-16 and still couldn't get in because of politics. Oklahoma, Tulsa, the board, the committee, whatever, they still didn't get in. That's what I'm saying. There's still so many things working against them. Now, if there's not an NIT and players don't want to play and there's none of that stuff, you can give me all the well if they had made that three. Well, if there wasn't politics there. Well, if they didn't underachieve with the Ironman 5 2.0. Well, if this doesn't happen. Well, if that, eh, if they didn't have to work so hard here. Well, if they had beaten Florida Atlantic. Well, if they didn't do this. If, but all those things did happen. And those things are all working against St. Bonaventure. And now players don't even want to play in what would be a secondary tournament that would help the brand of the school. What are we left with then? The almost? Well, you know, they're, they're, they're playing the numbers game to get there, though. They're, they're playing it. But does the numbers game work out for St. Bonaventure? In most cases, it doesn't. It doesn't. Yeah. For the NCAA, it doesn't. Say I'm negative. Say whatever you want. It doesn't work in Bonaventure's favor, period. So what are we well, doing then? We're never going to well, go to the and, NIT and, ever again? Great. Yeah. And so we can put a bow on it by saying, you know, yes. there are a lot of concerning things that are happening right now in the world of college athletics, in the world of college basketball. I know that there are a lot of people down at the in the Bond administration who are terrified of things right now, very worried about the direction that things are going. And you can just add what you said right there to the list. Yeah. And, 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 and that's where we're at from the NIL to the portal, to the not caring about the NIT anymore, to always having a foot out the door, to having to raise money to now uh, be the ones to foot the bill for these guys who may or may not even want to be here to begin with. It's all concerning. Yeah. What you bring up is concerning, but it is just the unfortunate reality of the situation it's entirely out of control right now i don't know what will need to happen for there to be uh, to, to to really truly address this what data you know we'll need to see in the next three to five years to to actually address this what type of legislation you know may come down but for right now it is the reality it's it's not good for a program like bana it is pretty dark you know, right now, you know, what, what can you do? I don't know. Try to recruit a team next year that again, maybe has a chance to win the A-10 tournament and, and get in that way. This is amazing. I held you way too long. St. Bonaventure basketball insider, JP Butler. I hope everybody enjoyed the conversation. Nobody can break it down on this kind of stuff and beyond like this guy, JP Butler, all brought to you by Stanley law offices. JP, great to see you. Keep doing your thing, hey, my man. Mike, I really appreciate being on with you. It means a lot to me. Great talking to you. Let's do it again sometime soon.